Now, next loop. You can do the same thing with what's called a while loop. It takes a little bit more. Um, while loop tests, this just counts. A for loop just counts. It goes through so many times. Um, a while loop does a test. So I've created a function, this sum squared while, and I'm going to start with index. I have to define my index equals 0, f out equals 0, a temporary uh, variable is uh, negative uh, 101. So while this is um, less than, well, f out is less than negative 1, which isn't the first time through. It won't work the first time through. Um, then it increases this by 1, and um, it takes this output variable and adds my i squared. It looks real, here, we're taking matrix, this out, this out, my i squared. Same thing here. This out, this out, my i squared. Uh, we do have a, a temporary variable. Um, all, this, all this statement does here is it displays my i. I don't even need it at all to execute the loop, just to see what my i is. This time, we have to actually set my i. Each time through, we have to set it. And right now, if I, if I do this for 5, sum square while 5, It shouldn't work, um, or let's see. The um, the first time through, it's gonna it's gonna set these three variables. Temp is negative one hundred one. Um, F out is zero. Temp is 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 um, not it's greater than it's greater than this temp variable plus um, temp plus a hundred is negative one so f out is not it fails to be less than negative one so the while loop doesn't even execute doesn't do anything um, The way to fix it is here. So I just wanted to make sure, the first time through, I wanted to make sure my while loop would fail. It would end when it's supposed to. Um, now I'm going to do, um, and I don't want to, do I want to do f out less, less than the maximum number? That doesn't seem to make sense. I want to do my i less than maximum. So as long as the index is less than five, it'll it'll execute. So let's give this one a try and go here while my i is less than the maximum. Then do this and um, I'll comment this out. This ought to work now. Okay, it found it. I had, I had two names which were the same in my system. It found this one first, basically. So then it went and executed it first. Um, and do we get 55 out just like before? So it looks for the index is equal to 0. It's going to drop into the loop. It's, it's going to set the index equal 1. It's going to set the output equal um, index squared plus zero. Index is next time through the index increases to two. Two squared plus what this was before is five, and so on. So it goes. This is a while loop. 
And this demonstrates how, to, how a while loop functions. Okay. Um, if this is a, uh, I'm doing things a little differently now. The, um, and, and I'm also going to show a few other things here. So this if statement that if x is less than 5, it's going to output true. If it's between 5 and 10, it's going to output fuzzy. Otherwise, it's going to output false. So let's try this one of uh, 4. So 4 is less than 5, and it's, it's going to be true. 5 is not less than 5. It is greater than or equal to. So the answer is fuzzy. Um, x, 10 is uh, not less than 10. It's greater than or equal to 10. So uh, it's, it's now, it should output false now, and it does. So this is how an if statement works. If, and then you have a condition of some sort. It's kind of like the while statement, where you had a while... And here's the condition, while this is less than this. An if statement, while um, if this is less than this, then do this. Else if, you have another condition. This is an and. These, um, so both of these things have to be true. Or is just the opposite. You can also do an, a not or a... Um, um, or a, you can do a not, or you can do a, um, a, a an or. So the answer was false. If I not the answer and negate the answer, uh, it turns into a true. Okay, and answer is still false. I forgot what the not variable is. Some programs use the exclamation point, by the way, to mean not. In, in MATLAB, they use this, I think they use the squiggly, this squiggly thing, and it, and it gives it. So, um, I'm going to double check that. Let's see. Performs a logical knot of the input array. Uh, returning ones and zeros, okay. Or you can also do this. Um, why it gave me five, the answer is false, but why it gave me five answers, or, yeah, kind of weird. Not one should be zero. Not zero should be one. Not five. I think it'll return zero as um, anything other than zero is treated as true. Zero is treated as false. Okay, so that's your logical knot. You can do one or one is true, one or uh, zero. One or zero should be one. Zero or one should be one. Zero or zero, false or false is false. True or true is true. So that's your or operator. The up, the two. Um, it's your uh, backslash. It's the shift backslash which gives you that vertical line. That's your or operator. Okay, back to here. So here's here's how the if statement works. Um, you can pause execution. So I'm going to go back to my test if. Where is it? There it is. It, um, it, it, won't, it won't stop there. I just remembered uh, I'm, I'm, into, I'm in the false. Well, it should have gone through. When, I, when it hits keyboard in the, um, in the test if statement, and I forgot to save it. There it is. The star is still up there. Better save it. This time when I do my test if, it'll stop at the keyboard. This is a way to interrogate everything that's going on. Here's your workspace window. 
um, it, it's a value of x, x equals 10. So you can stop program execution, and this is for debugging, for figuring out what's wrong. You can stop program execution temporarily. Uh, return. If I just type return, it, it starts up again. You'll notice a special prompt, the K uh, prompt, which means keyboard. And then if you type return, you've got to type it out. You just can't hit the enter button. But if you type it out, that it'll um, stop execution. Um, let's see. Pause will also, uh, there we go. Pause will also stop it for an indefinite amount of time. So instead of keyboard, I can do pause. So I'm going to run it again, and it's it's stuck. It's it's it stops here. Just hit any key to keep going. Oops. Down here, just hit anything, and it'll continue execution. So you have a couple ways to temporarily stop your program so that you can figure things out. Um, okay, there's the pause. Test if. Switch kind of works like if. There we go. Let's go to the switch. Um, so in this case, if has conditions, switch is if this exactly matches one of these cases. And then switch also has the otherwise. So if switch exactly matches what your input is, it'll if it's k if if the input's four it'll output this if it's five it'll output this if it's six it'll output this if it's anything else it'll do unknown so we can do a test switch t s t s s w i t c h um of four and answer's true of five it should give me a fuzzy of six it should give me false and of 7, it should give me unknown. At 5.5, .5, it should give me an unknown. And so forth. So that's how the switch works. These are all control structures in your programming. Um, most of the time, you don't want to... Um, you don't want to program control structures. If you can do things with vectors, do things with vectors in MATLAB. So the if, the switch, the for, and the while, you probably, um, you need to know how to do it. But for the most part, you don't have to do it in MATLAB. And that's one of the powers of MATLAB. In every other programming language, you have to mess around with that a lot. In MATLAB, you can pretty much use linear algebra. Um, 